In this video you'll learn how to complete a single address ticket. We'll start off on the ticket dashboard screen. Let's begin by clicking the new button in the upper right hand corner of the screen. The contact information provided during registration has been automatically entered under the excavator information section. Changes cannot be made to the fields that have been grayed out. You can make changes to the rest of the information as needed. Fill in a fax number if you have one, your call back hours, and a cell phone. The field contact is the person utility companies will contact when they have questions about your job or the dig site. We recommend that someone who is familiar with the project and details about the work site serve as a field contact. Exactix automatically registers your name and phone number. If you have a different field contact for the utility companies to contact, enter a first and last name, select the contact method from the drop-down icon and enter the required information. In the working for field, enter the homeowner's first and last name or the company that hired you to do the work. Enter the type of work you are doing. For example, installing a fence or irrigation, building a pool or landscaping. If you have a subcontractor you would like to add to your ticket, click on the Add Remove Subcontractors link. Click Create New. Enter the required information. And click Add. Then click Close. Remember, the subcontractor field is not required and anyone digging should have their own locate ticket. Before moving forward, there are help links located at the top right hand corner of each section. Click on the link. This gives you detailed descriptions for each field, making it easy for you when you have any difficulty throughout the ticket process. Next, we'll look at the dates section. The first question asks if you are digging underwater. This video covers excavation on dry land. To learn more about underwater tickets, please view the underwater tickets course which can be found on the browse training page in Coursera. Next, you'll be asked to enter the date and time you plan to start working. By default, the Exactix system sets it at two full business days, not including the day you request the ticket. This is the legal time frame utilities have to respond to your ticket. You can change the date and time you plan to start working by clicking on the start date and using your mouse to select the date on the calendar. If you need to change the time, the option is below the calendar. You cannot enter a start date and time that is before the legal time frame in the calendar. This is the only field that indicates when your work is to begin. The start date and time should not be typed in any other fields on the ticket. Before we move on to the next section, we will cover the remainder of the fields that are auto-completed in this section. The renewal date is the date the ticket must be renewed for it to not expire. The expiration date is the date the ticket will expire and no longer be valid. The due date indicates the date and time, by law, utilities have to respond to your request. The next section covers the work information. First, how deep are you digging? If you know how deep you are digging, enter the number in the first field and select the unit from the drop-down menu in the second field. Units are feet, inches, yards, centimeters, meters, and unknown. If the depth is unknown, Place a zero in the first field. Next, we ask if you will be using machinery? You must answer either yes or no. If you are unsure, default to yes. Is the area where you are digging going to be marked out with white paint? Yes, no, or unknown. Pre-marking your proposed dig site with white paint, flags, or chalk helps utility companies easily identify where digging is proposed. How long will the work take? Enter a number in the first field. Select days, hours, months, unknown, weeks, or years to indicate period of time. If the duration is unknown, place a zero in the first field. Will there be directional drilling? Yes, no, or unknown. Is a permit needed? Yes, no, or unknown. If you answered yes to a permit needed, please type the permit number in this field. If you do not have the permit number, enter an A for not applicable. Next, is this ticket required as a result of damage to an underground line? Yes or no? The site information begins with the dig site type. It automatically defaults to street address and selects Florida. If you need to dig between intersections or at an intersection, you will need to complete the internet ticket entry application and take the training. Visit my.sunshine811.com for more information. Enter the county name where the dig site is located and select the proper name from the drop-down. Enter the address, followed by the street name. 
As you type, options will appear. Make sure the correct place is included and select the option from the drop-down using your mouse. To further pinpoint your dig site location, you will enter the nearest intersecting street. A drop-down menu shows you the nearest intersecting street and their distances to the dig site address. Select the appropriate street. If it is within a quarter mile of the dig site address, select the quarter mile box. If farther, skip the check box and add the approximate distance into the how far field. If the dig site address does not result in a drop-down list of nearest intersecting streets, then you will need to enter it manually. Now we'll move on to the additional site information. Enter the name of the community or commercial building if it applies, and the lot number if you have it. The next field is where the digging will take place. Select all that apply. Use the remarks section to give the locator information making it easier to access your dig site. Examples may include a gate code, directions or a dog in the backyard. If what is included in the checkboxes is not sufficient and or not enough information to explain where you are working, you will need to complete the internet ticket entry application and take the training to gain full access. Visit my.sunshine811.com for more information. The header section is a short phrase to catch the immediate attention of the receiving party or member utility. This field is not a required field and may not be viewed or processed by the utility locators. If you do not have any information to place in the header, then leave the field blank. You're not quite ready to select complete yet. The map on the right should look like this. The area shown in blue is the parcel data. It determines the utilities to be notified. The roadway highlighted in red indicates the nearest intersecting street. Instances when parcel data is not available, the area shown in blue is the address range and it determines the utilities to be notified. New developments less than two years old can generate the street not found message. When this happens, choose the option for incomplete. Then contact 811 and select option 1 to have one of our agents complete manual mapping of the location. Verify that all information is correct. Then click released at the top right hand corner of the screen. If at any time before you complete your ticket, you want to cancel the request, click on the abort discard button in the same location. After clicking released, you will see a list of member utilities we notify with underground facilities near your dig site. If you want to review the ticket information again before sending your request, click the Back to Ticket button and you will be brought back to the main screen to make any necessary revisions. When you are ready to submit your information, click Send Ticket. You are now given your ticket number and excavator ID. Save the ticket number and excavator ID in a safe place. If you provided an email address during ticket entry, a copy of the ticket will be sent to you. You can now select Close. Now watch our video on how to view responses with an Xactix account. Music